I recently made an engineer's horror video using this old Adamant A2 trials frame. I'm sure people were watching through their fingers as I hacked bits off and drilled holes where I shouldn't. If you fancy a scare, check out that video on the card above and in the description. Well, it's now come time to build it up. Normally I'd start with adding a seat post, but that's impossible with this frame. Is this the first truly seatless bike I've built on camera? Who needs a seat anyway? Not like I'm sitting down when I'm jumping about, is it? Be prepared to get a million, where's your seat? questions if you decide to get a bike like this though. I'll pin the comment with the best comeback to that question. A box of parts appears. Ideally, I'd go all out and use lightweight parts to go with making a frame lighter, but in the end, I went with mostly correct era, mid-2000s parts, which aren't exactly lightweight, but are cool in their own way. Pretty pleased to have found an old Echo headset, and the Echo is a sister brand to Adamant, as the frame has a pretty fat head tube, and these cups match it perfectly. It's not just engineers I like to scare, this is for all the bike mechanics out there. By the way, hit me up on Patreon for longer videos released early. I think it's almost time my headset press got its own merch. You can find my merch, like I'm wearing, at AliClarkson.com. The fork is an Echo Urban, slightly newer than the frame, but we'll give it a pass. This one has dedicated Magura rim brake mounts. I don't like front rim brakes, but I'm going to try it anyway, because I'm weird. I always swap to a disc brake later if I want anyway. I found this stem out in the street, so I'll give it a new home. It's a Tratec forged and I think it's 150 by 25 degrees, but it won't tell me. The bike has a high bottom bracket, so this stem will help bring the bars up higher to match it. The fork was used and came pre-cut. Fortunately, a 10mm spacer is all I need for a perfect fit. I think this stem would be perfect, but I'm not keen on the white. Silver would be a much better match. Let's strip it. First I need to clean it to get any of the grease off. Fortunately, I still have plenty of paint stripper left from when I stripped the frame. And can you believe it? I'm even using protection this time. Right, coated, now we just wait. I have no idea what paint Trartec used, but it's the toughest paint I've ever seen. That is some seriously strong paint stripper, yet it barely even softened it. Even my kettle was shocked. What I thought would take 15 minutes actually took me over an hour. Which is why I couldn't be bothered getting a better finish. Trartec definitely wins the toughest paint award. But I live by the ancient mantra of, that'll do pig. So despite not quite matching the frame, that'll do pig indeed. Inspired bars on this style of bike is a bit of an odd choice, but rather than have them in my usual angle, I'm going to tip them forward to get a bit more reach and a higher front end. As always, I check their acoustics to see if they're still safe. These ones check out. Nah then, have I totally ruined the BB shell by drilling through it? Let's attempt to fit the bottom bracket and find out. Let's give it a fighting chance. Lots of lube! This is a mid-2000s Trartec Isis model. Looks like it's been through a lot, but still smooth as silk. Holes? What holes? It fitted as easily as any BBI fitted. 
Gonna slap on some old Trate cranks. These are simple, strong cranks, no complaints. If you're new to the world of trials, then you may not know that it's common to run the freewheel system on the cranks. This is a tensile freewheel, which alongside a couple of other brands, was one of the first to develop trial specific freewheels. Nice era correct battering too, either a goo, adamant, czar, but not quite sure which. All matches pretty well I think. Rear wheel time! So I have this Trialtech rim, which is nice and wide, no dents, big holes, a good trials rim, but it's white. And you can forget it if you think I'm going to try and strip this after how long that stem took. Ah, <sighs> more white Trialtech paint, this time on the rear hub which is a screw on style as a freewheel mechanism is on a crank instead. Can't be bothered building it, let's do this the easy way. Paint is no good for the rim brake, I'd normally grind the rim after putting the tyre on but it's getting late and I don't want to annoy the neighbours so I'll do it now. And again, if you're new to trials and don't know why this is done, it gives high friction in all weather. Using special harder pads, the brake is a lot more powerful. The downside is the brakes become very noisy and rims wear out faster, but it's worth it for the extra power trials needs. Big holes require big rim tape. People often think it's the inner tube they can see, but it's not, so stop asking. This is a fairly rare find, a mid-2000s trial sticky tyre. These were one of the first trial specific 26 inch tyres. And this one is showing its age, although it should be fine for my needs. I must admit I was never a fan of these rear ones though, they're very heavy and have an overly damped feeling as I clearly demonstrate. Still going to use it though. Unlike a track bike, there's no lock ring needed for the sprocket, as it's impossible to put any backwards forces through it. I exchanged real human money for this front wheel. This YouTube money is really starting to roll in. I hope Pro 4 onto an older Echo rim. I think. I added a grind on this when I did the rear one. I was tempted to take it apart and strip it silver, but that plan went out the window when Trartec decided to use bomb shelter grade paint. Separately to the rear tyre, I managed to get a matching front trial tyre too. Cheers Ross! This one's in much better condition than the rear. Unlike the rear tyre, these were my favourite front tyres for years. Great grip and I liked the damped feeling, it meant my front wheel stayed where I put it, as you can clearly see here. Starting to come together now, what do you think we should call this bike? A simple Trartec tensioner for, you know, tensioning. And a KMC K6 10 chain for handling my locomotive like torque. You've got to watch your baggy pants with this thing. Going for the simplicity of a Magura HS33 brake. The frame is dedicated for these so it makes sense. I searched for older models but couldn't justify the price when I could just use one of these that the cute thief got me. Speaking of, I haven't seen him around, I wanted to have him in the video again. Psst, 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 psst. I've already cut the hose to lengthen and bled with water for a lighter feel, and yeah that is a common thing in trials. If I'm going to stop caring about the colour scheme then I may as well fit these gold viz clamps eh? I 
I made my own pads with some new material I found which I think is the best yet. They've been fitted to some Echo alloy backings. Usually, the louder the brake, the better it works, because of science and junk. Does mean no riding at night, otherwise you get some pretty annoyed neighbours. I'm going to see what the fuss is about and fit a matching front HS33. Some echo clamps will do the job of clamping. These forks take bigger M6 bolts, which is actually a great idea. Bigger bolts are stronger and stiffer, and less likely to strip. And these were a good find. Brand new TNN pads. Well liked in the trials world, although I do think mine are better. The CNC backings are definitely brilliant though. The clamps are designed not to use the usual cylinder washer to align the caliper, instead they clamp directly to the cylinder for extra stiffness. The disadvantage is that if the frame or fork mounts aren't straight, then your pads won't hit flush. Not the end of the world though, they'll soon wear flat. Hmm, this front wheel needs some work. Disc brakes used to be the common front brake, but then it changed to rim brakes. I used to be with it, but then they changed what it was, and now what I'm with isn't it, and what's it seems weird and scary to me. Remember these? I didn't learn my lessons from my awful attempt at stripping these wild Trartec pedals I used on the Crescent build earlier this year. Scabby, but I think they'll suit this bike. Sadly, the Crescent has to go back to its owner and is sat in a box awaiting collection. Shame, as I really liked it. Almost uh, Wait, has the cute thief been in here all along? Probably trying to steal my ODI grips, the scamp. Caught him just in time. The grips are still here, although they are kind of warm. GT85 works well for grips and smells really nice to boot. Can't guarantee it'll work as a cat deterrent though. Well, shiver me timbers, the bike is finished. It's definitely no lightweight. It'd be interesting to take this out in the streets and see how it fares. I've no idea what the geometry is other than the bottom bracket is plus 60 mil. Usually I dislike high bottom brackets, but let's see if the higher stem helps. I'll get a riding video done ASAP, I'll find out how it rides, if I get front HS33 rim brakes, if the rear tyre sucks as much as I remember, and most importantly, see if the frame survives. Drop a comment with your thoughts on it, and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Have a great week, and I'll catch you next time. See ya! Rather than having music, I thought I'd just carry on talking, be a bit weird just adding a random song on the end. Uh, these are my Patreon folk who support me on Patreon. Thank you very much, guys. I hope you are able to read your names. I'm trying to squeeze you all in. We've got Brian T there. Uh, who else? We've got Chris Price. Thank you very much, guys. Who we got? Who we got here? Peter. Uh, do you have a second name, Peter? I don't know. We've got Eric M. Who else? We've got Fred. Again, Fred. Have you got a second name? I don't know. Uh, yeah. Thanks to all these people who do support me on Patreon. Uh, if you want to join them, please do. If you don't, just go and check out some of my other videos on YouTube. Cheers!